Hello booktube, it's Roz and this is a slightly rushed and impromptu um, April wrap up and May TBR because I'm just back from a week away. Um, it was absolute heaven to be able to leave town and be somewhere different for a week, it's been glorious. Um, but I really want to try and get this done and, and up today on the 1st of May as it's my April wrap up. And it's been a good reading month. I've managed to kind of read something that connected with four different booktube events. Um, Lit with Indian Lit, uh, Saga Long, uh, Aussie April and the Disability Readathon. So um, that's quite satisfying, particularly because it brought me to some like good new new books, new authors for me. So my kind of top three things of the month i think um were um a classic adam bead um my Aussie april read the yield and a, a surprising one for me um lifting the veil a book of short stories by isma chukdai and I, I i'm not a big short story fan as you'll know if you watch this regularly so um that was a particularly enjoyable surprise and I'm kind of spreading those three through the course of the video. So um, if you know about all the other stuff, but you'd like to hear about Ismail Chugtai, don't miss that because it's further on. You know, fast forward a bit. Yeah. So. Greatest pleasure of the month, I think, has to be reading Adam B by George Eliot. Now, in a book of lots of new books, how, how interesting that familiar author and a classic book should be my favourite. It was her first novel, written in 18, well, when did it come out? 1859, it was published. I just love George Eliot and I think that part of that is I have come to George Eliot at the right time of my life. Now, it's the the, the cliché quote about George, George Eliot is, is what Virginia Woolf said about Middlemarch, and she said Middlemarch you know, is so, so the novel written for grown-ups. And But as so often with Virginia Woolf, there is a serious germ of truth in that, I think. And because there are, there are authors... Um, like if you just think of the, the Victorians um, or 19th century authors, it, you know, that you can really enjoy in your teens and your 20s. Uh, yeah, the Brontes, all of the Brontes, I'd say. Um, Tenet of Wildfell Hall maybe might be better when you're slightly older, but, but generally, you know, you're actually, you're almost going to get the most out of things like Wuthering Heights or Jane Eyre when you're, when you're young. Um, Elizabeth Gaskell? safe bet for young people apart from apart from Cranford that's probably one to read when you're a bit older um I didn't enjoy it when I read it in my teens and loved it when I read it earlier this year Jane Austen now I, I think you know you can read and love Jane Austen at any age but I suspect that if you read her first when you're in your teens or your 20s you're gonna love her love her more than if you only come to her later in life I don't know. What do you think? Tell me. Tell me, Booktube. Do you think there's an ideal age for, for certain authors? Anyway, I definitely think that George Eliot is an author that is um, richest and most satisfying when you've knocked about a bit. It, it's the way she writes about people. Um, I mean, she does like love and relationships, but she's as interested in family relationships as she is in in romantic ones. You know, not that she can't do a romantic sort of relationship but she's got a very yes yeah, sort of nuanced sensibility about human beings I think you know her 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 baddies are never straightforwardly bad and her goodies always have flaws and Adam Bede is a brilliant example of that she's also very funny um which I really appreciate and part of the joy of reading Adam Bede was that I was reading it with some wonderful booktube women um Kim of Middle of the Book March is sort of organising an Elliot 2021 um, group that you can dip in and out of. In May, the group is reading Silas Mana. So, you know, if you're tempted, go and visit Kim's channel. I'll, I'll do a link to her to her um, her video where she explains about Elliot 2021. But, you know, having people like, you know, Alba and Christina and Jacqueline and so on, 
share their thoughts about the novel was a joy as well. And I think we're all, we're all perhaps women of a, yeah, part, not uh, women in our prime. I don't know how old Nurse is. She's she's the newest member of the group. Um, she may she may tell me she's a a mere spring chicken. I don't know. Anyway, such a pleasure, such a pleasure to read that book, and it's still living with me, you know, in 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 my head. And and I've only got one of George Eliot's novels left to read. That's Daniel Deronda. Um, and I'm I'm almost not sure when to read it. Uh, you know, let that. But I want to spin out the the anticipation by. Maybe keeping it till next year. I don't know. We'll see. Another thing that I really loved about Adam Bede, and I've realised I love about all her novels, is she writes about human... The things that human beings are passionate about. And in Adam Bede, that's um, religion, even though she was herself agnostic. You know, and in Felix Holt, it's politics. And uh, anyway, I'll stop going on about it. I'll stop going on about it because I have lots of books to talk about in this video. A different kind of classic, I think, gave me the um, my mm, newest or most different or unusual reading experience um, of the month, and that was reading Niall's Saga as part of Saga Long. But I've made a video about that, so I'm I'm not going to say anything more about that one because that'll speed me along a bit. Um, but one thing that I was thinking was that um, about a week ago I made. Um, Sean's tag did Sean's tag about good books with bad endings and I was thinking that a couple of the things I've read this month have actually been you know good books with good endings it made me th uh, doing that tag made me really notice the kind of quality of the endings of the books I read this month I suppose and um, uh, one of those is quite a new book it's um uh, I think it came out in 2016 in Korea and was a bestseller but the English translation came out in 2020 and that's um Kim Jung Kim Jung born 1982 um by Cho Nam Ju I've probably pronounced that wrong and, and Sean will tell me off for not having looked it up beforehand because he's very good about that it's an odd little book in many ways I don't mean little as in belittling it I mean it's short because the style is slightly strange, like like Kim Jong is, is is a kind of every woman for all the injustices and frustrations and harassment that um, women experience, and particularly women in Korea, which is quite an, an unequal society in terms of, of 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 you know male female experience. But we can all, all women will recognise things that happen to um, Kim Jong. But it's written almost like a case study. And then when you get to the end, the ending really pulls that together and makes sense of, of the style and structure of the book, I guess. And then at the very end, it's like the author, I just love her for this, she gets the knife and she really kind of twists that knife in, in the bloody wound at the end. Very satisfying ending. Another good book with a good ending that I read this 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 month was um The Mermaid of Black Conch which um is by Monique Ruffy she's written quite a few books but I've never read anything by her before she's a new author for me um she was originally from Trinidad and Tobago but she lives in the UK now has done for years and it's it's a book that you could think would be kind of irritatingly whimsical, you know, because which I know people hate, um, and 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 I do too, because it's about a mermaid. Except that it makes the mermaid really physically convincing. You know, it's one of those books that gets the smells and the sounds and the colours of the place that it's writing about really really nails it and and you know I really felt like this mermaid ha was a was a, an actual physical creature that I could picture book with three points of view um which I I, I like that you know like a sort of n not as a straightforward linear narrative so you've got the you've got an om omniscient narrator telling telling the story as it were one of the characters um main characters writes a diary many years later and so it's first person but looking back on those events and that's in more of a patois which which was enjoyable and then you get the mermaid herself her her voice 
which is interesting because she um, is from she's sort of pre pre Colombian, you know, you know, comes from sort of indigenous folklore of 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 um, of Trinidad and Tobago, I guess, um, and she has to relearn to speak, and then she has to learn um, uh, English. You know, she learns to speak with the sort of Patois that she, she has to learn that, and she learns BSL. So it, her voice in the book is written almost in kind of like poetry. Um, and again, that sounds like it could be irritating, and it's not at all. It it, it works, and then everything comes to a, a kind of a resolution that is a, a like a not a neat ending but a really satisfying good ending in dr from a dramatic point of view a narrative point of view so a book i'd recommend and it was my real life book group choice and when i said that that was a my book group choice a few people said oh i wonder what your book group would make of it because I've, I've kind of i, I think i've falsely giving the impression that that my real life book group are not very adventurous readers which is really not fair um not all ros books appeal to them but everyone enjoyed it this hit the sweet point this book everyone read all of it and enjoyed it and found it rewarding and and, and interesting so uh, it was a winner which was lucky so it was my suggestion so what else has been good this month well, I read two other books that that kind of draw on voices from the past and sort of indigenous heritage and folklore or history, um, history in the case of these two, to um, tell a really interesting story, I suppose, about the present. One of those is, or, or recent past in this case, one of those is The Inhabited Woman by Gioconda Belli. And that's a, a Nicar uh, she's a Nicaraguan author, and it's she wrote this in the like nineteen eighties, so it's sort of modern, but um, you know, not present day. Though she's still writing today, um, very well thought of Nicaraguan author. It was um, in one of my kind of scallydandle books, you know, reading something from a a, a, new, a different country, a place I haven't read something before. It was a lovely buddy read um, with Robin of a Quiet Midden, but I will say no more about that one because I will make a video just about that but the other one um is uh the yield by tara june winch and that was my aussie april choice and a few people have kind of recommended it and i'm so grateful to the people that recommended it It came out in 2019 um but i think possibly it's only been available in europe in the uk maybe in 2020 you know it's 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 a, it's a current book i suppose and Tara June Winch is an Australian Indigenous, you know, Aboriginal author. And again, it's a book with three three points of view, um, three intertwined narratives. And I, that, I really like that narrative structure, like particularly in this book. So you've got um, August, who's um, the kind of, I suppose that's the main story and the, the sort of the present day story. And she is a young woman who comes back back to the area of Massacre Plains. It's a bit of a clue as in the, the name there about that it's not been a great history there for um, uh, Indigenous people. But she comes back because her grandfather's died and she comes back for the funeral. And um, so you have her story. You have um, the story of the Reverend Greenleaf who ran a, at the end of the 19th, the beginning of the 20th century, a mission um, to uh, you know, save save the uh, Aborigine people of the area by running this, um, you know, Christianize them and 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 so on. Who he writes a a, a letter, an extended letter in um, I think it's nineteen fifteen, in which he's reflecting, I suppose, on perhaps that what he did, although his intentions were good were actually was part of the abuse and cultural uh, decimation of 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 the indigenous population of the area um so he he's it's yeah there's his voice 
but then and then best of all you get um august's grandfather poppy or albert um who he was writing a, a, a dictionary before he died and his a dictionary of that now I, I need to get the 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 name right here because it was um unfamiliar for me of the Wiradjuri language and he, he's kind of I suppose saving saving this language from becoming extinct by capturing these words and explaining what they mean but also like he, 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 he with each word he, he talks about the um stories associated with it its importance in that the culture or anecdotes from his own life so you get like bits of his life and and this is another book where it has an element in it that could have been a bit kind of i don't know magical realist and unappealing way like he talks about time travel but it's not time travel in a kind of a literal way i mean it's like he has a, he connects with um his elders and his ancestors but what we know is that he as a toddler is placed in this boys home um and these boys boys homes and girls homes were about taking aboriginal children and 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 you know uprooting them and then just destroying their their language and their culture so he's a, 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 a and he goes there as a toddler so so he's a traumatized child and you kind of feel like he these this time traveling to the past and the his ancestors you don't have to take it too literally it's it, it's like how he stays sane i suppose you could tell i really enjoyed this book uh, any book that really kind of explores language always um brings me a lot of pleasure i think and and it's a book that is heartfelt um but she pulls it she pulls it off tara june winch it was a, a book that touched me i think because my my father's mother um was australian um well she probably thought of herself as british actually um we're talking about someone who was you know born in the latter part of the 19th century she she was she was living in australia at the time of the atrocities that are described in this book basically and was of the class and background i suppose that she would have been uh her, not her personally as a as a young girl who who and she and she moved back to europe in, in in her late teens to go to you know school in brussels and 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 you know um find an englishman to marry um but her her family were part of the crimes i suppose that are described in this book so i found that yeah it, it touched me in that sense now that was the yield moving on the poetry collection i read this month also kind of i suppose explored the issues around language and culture and the, and the meaning of our language for us because it was um uh anise coltz's um uh, collection at the edge of night and i'm not going to talk about that because i made a scally dandling video about it she's from luxembourg but one of the most interesting kind of things about the book apart from the poems themselves obviously was that she as a poet she writes she writes in three languages um the three languages of luxembourg but at the point when her husband died she stopped writing in german and chose to only write poetry in french for sort of deeply personal and cultural reasons that intrigued me so each month you know, I try to read a book of poetry. That was the Anise Colts. I'm reading a play every month, which I share with Tilly, my daughter of Tilly Shelf, and we do a discussing drama video. And we've done that. Um, uh, but I just want to say that the, the play that we chose by Kate O'Reilly, we, we chose because of, of the Disability Readathon, and it was really nice to kind of grasp the chance to be part of that and read something by a disabled playwright. Um, but I won't, I won't talk about it because, again, you could watch the video the discussing drama videos that tilly and i make they're quite long it's a niche interest i don't expect people to sort of necessarily want to watch them but it gives us a lot of satisfaction um 
unpicking a play each month. So so it's a kind of like it's almost like a, a personal personal indulgence for Tilly and I to do to do those. But Kate O'Reilly is an interesting playwright and uh, disability arts activist, I suppose. And I, I really hope to get to see one of her plays one day. Another thing that I always try and do each month is make myself read at least one book of non-fiction because if I don't make myself it, I could forget to do that and um, this month's non-fiction was um, a memoir by a Moroccan author um, and um, Mohamed Shukri well-known Moroccan author but I have to admit I've never read anything by him before um, he it's quite a harsh, sad book. He wrote it in the 1970s, but it's about his childhood and and sort of teenage years um, in the 1930s to the 1950s, sort of about 1935 to 1955, roughly. And he was extremely, he lived in extreme poverty and uh, had to really, you know, hustle to um survive um had an abusive father and then around the age of 20 he he just decides to change his life by learning to read and there's something inspiring isn't there about that sort of the idea that that literacy and education can 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 save us uh, uplift us i suppose um he um the book is translated by Paul Bowles, the writer who wrote Sheltering Sky. That's his probably his best known book, because um Shukri became friends with there was a sort of a literary scene in Tangiers, I suppose, in, in the nineteen um sixties. Um Tennessee Williams um was there, um Jean Genet, and, and Shukri became friends with Bowles and Williams and, and Genet. And um it was an uncomfortable read, but a, an interesting one. And I really should read some of his fiction as well, I think. Um, my, uh, after just after I read that, because that was quite a kind of downbeat book, I suppose, although hopeful at the end, um, I had a bit of light relief. And um, I read a one of the Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. One of the things I'm trying to do this year is is do some completing of things so series that I've been reading I'm trying to sort of catch up with or trilogies that I've only read one or two books of I'm trying to complete and so that was this is one of my completism choices I suppose and uh, it's for, called False Value they're fun they're silly it's kind of like magic come detective stories put together closest I came to a disappointment this month if I'm honest I mean it was fine I enjoyed it he does what he does well but I think I'm into a point of diminishing returns with this series I think it's the eighth book and I, I, it might be the last that I read so I want to end my what I read this month on a high and the other kind of readathon -y thing I took part in was um uh Lit with Indian Lit, and it's um, a bookshop called um, Smriti of San, um, but her channel's called Sant Reads. She proposed she she was encouraging us to read Indian literature, but not Indian literature that's written in English. I like there's an awful lot of um, the the Indian writers who are well known, perhaps within India and out, but but beyond, write, choose to write in English, but we're less likely perhaps to read. Um, literature that, that was originally written in the the I think there's twenty there was about there's hundreds of of of, of languages in 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 India but there's twenty two kind of like big ones you know official languages and and the, this readathon was to say read read something by an author in in, in one of those languages and I read um, a collection of short stories lifting the veil by Isma Chugtai who wrote in Urdu. And uh, she she was born in 1915. She died in 1991. She's a very well known um, Urdu woman writer, and um, pioneering pioneering, I suppose. And she started writing short stories in the 1930s, and they're they're just stunning. I thought um, stunning short stories, very realist, um, really kind of looking at the the life of women in um, that 
in a sort of the sort of northwest sort of area of India. I, 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 you know, when you read something and it takes you to a place and a time and a culture and an experience that you don't know, but you become completely embedded in it by reading it. Well, that's what True Ties Short Stories did did for me. And if you watch this, um, my videos regularly, you'll know I'm not a great reader of short stories. So the fact that that was one of my, you know, five star top reads of the month, I think is, is exceptional for me. And I, I really say, do go and look for, I read a short story by, by Ismail Shukhtai. You, you, you won't regret it. I, I think. Yeah, I hope. So that was my wrap up of what I read in April. What a good month, 12 books. None of them a real disappointment. What about May? What's coming in May? Well, I've got, um, there's a lot of um, readathon-y things happening in May again. I, I'm really working on just picking one thing for, uh, for each as a rule so that I don't get, I get to read other things as well. So I've got a couple of, of, of unconnected reads lined up already that I'm, um, I'm looking forward to. One is Sharks in the Time of Saviours, which is my real life book group book. We're, we're on a bit of a island fishy themed role, obviously. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. That's by, um, now, not an author I know well, um, Kawai Strong Washburn. Burn. And so he's an American author from Hawaii. Um, and looking forward to that one. Uh, new book came out 2020. I'm going to read Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke and that's along with Courtney Ferrito. I'm really looking forward to that. So many people have told me that Attica Locke's books are excellent. So, um, and that came out in 2017 and it's the first of a series. So if I like it, oh, who knows? There'll be like a number to follow. So that'll be a joy. Asian Readathon this month and Sean has of Sean the Book Maniac has set me up with a book for the Asian Readathon um, because we're reading Trees on a Slope, um, which is um, a Korean book which we're reading together. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, Sean. Um, it's it's Springathon, and um, I've got one definite for Springathon, which is um, to read um, the. The Invention of Nature by Anthea Wolfe. That's about um, Humboldt, um, the adventurer and naturalist and scientist. Um, I, yeah, that's, that's that's my non-fiction for the month. And I'm, uh, I think that some of the Springthorn people that run it, I think, might have read it last year and enthused about it. Heidi, I'm sure, from Everybody's, is really enthused about it. So I'm, I'm keen for that. I'm also going to read some poetry, I think, to link into Springathon. Um, Edward Thomas, um, collection of poetry. He also kind of links in nicely for um, another of the month's events, which is, and um, Katie of Books and Things is doing a readathon of books bet written between 1900 and 1950, and he'll be my one of my choices for that. Um, the Waves by Virginia Woolf. I'm so looking forward to that for us as part of that of that well another of my choices that links into that and I'm reading that with Sina of Beating Around the Books and Laura uh the recovering bookworm so um I, when you read something like a Virginia Woolf or a Clarice Lispector or you know James Joyce those sort of books it can be really good reading them with a couple of other people and um it, it kind of gets you through the the challenges of uh, that kind of book um, particularly enjoyably I think now um oh there, there there's a couple that there's a couple of other things that I will probably also read in the 1900 to 1950 but one of them and one of them is um the cross by Sigrid Unset um the Norwegian writer um, from the early 20th century but that is also one of my choices for the the final event that I'm taking part in which is maybe Midrash which is uh, encourages us to read books that think and talk about religion and the cross is my fiction choice for that and my non-fiction choice for that is the crusades through Arab eyes and that's by Amin uh, Malouf which means that it also works as a um 
Asian reader film book. So we come full circle. So that's some of my plans. And uh, if you've read any of them, tell me if I'm going to enjoy them. Have a great month, everybody. Uh, and um, I'll stop before I hit 30 minutes.